it's the average bundle that we've come to expect from Fanatical. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton. I am your humble narrator. Welcome back to another bundle banter. I took quite a long time off. I was sort of battling depression, but I figured out the cause of my depression, and that is my day job. So I'm making steps to move in a different direction. I guess you could say that this YouTube thing is all part of that, but in order for my YouTube channels to be successful, I will have to create some content on them. <laughs> That's always the secret to success, isn't it? Move forward. So we are moving forward with this bundle banter. It is from Fanatical, and it is the very positive bundle number three. I'm pretty excited to be making some content again. This isn't the greatest bundle out there. Uh, Humble had some great ones recently, courtesy of quite a few publishers. There was a Paradox right now, Bohemia's going on. There's one other that slips my mind currently, but that doesn't matter because we're not here to talk about Humble, so <laughs> maybe tomorrow. And uh, let's jump in and check out what the very positive three bundle from Fanatical holds for us. First game, Reventure. Second game, Let Them Come. Third game, Guns, Gore, and Cannoli. Learn Japanese to Survive Trilogy is the fourth game. Game number five, F1 2018. Game number six, Train Valley. Game number seven, Cook Serve Delicious 2. Game number eight is Meadow. And you can pick all of this up for $4, which is only 50 cents each, which, as usual, is a pretty killer deal. Is it worth it? Mmm, so-so. <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about each of the games, and you can decide that for yourself. Although I will throw my two cents in at the very end. Additionally, if you do decide to pick up the bundle, I hope that you'll use my affiliate link, because that really helps me out, and I do appreciate it. So, usually I plug that at the end, but I wanted to throw it in earlier, just in case you didn't know, in case you're not looking at the comments, because YouTube moved the comment section, and blah blah blah. Anyways, <laughs> enough rambling. Let's jump into these games and take a look at the first one, Reventure, an indie pixel platformer that's all about finding new and interesting ways to kill yourself. We better get started because there are 100 ways to die. It's pretty entertaining to try and find them all, and the game actually keeps track of how many other players have managed to find more endings than you have found, which is a pretty cool hook, and it keeps you searching, because of course you want to be the very best, right? Right? It's a simple game, but one that's pretty engaging because of the likable style, tight controls, and pretty unique concept. The sense of humor and the writing isn't, like, gut-bustingly hilarious, but it will at least cause you to give off multiple nose exhalations, because as we all know, in our extremely cynical time period, nose exhalations are the only truly acceptable form of, of joy. So I hope that these videos cause you to exhale through your nose multiple times as well. <laughs> Anyways, I think that that's really all you can ask for, for 50 cents. Give it a try. I mean, it's pretty fun to die, it's nicely designed, and pretty fun to play overall. Game number two, Let Them Come. I got this one for free from Alienware at some point, and it is fun for a few minutes, right before it becomes mind-numbingly boring. I like the pixel art style, and the little face in the corner that displays your health, and of course the vast amounts of gore. Mowing down a horde of aliens is always a good time. But sitting on top of a stationary machine gun starts to feel stale shockingly quick. There are upgrades and some thumping music that managed to hold my interest for longer than I expected, but let's be honest, how long can a tower defense game with only one tower actually keep one engaged? Sure, you can rack up your combo score of 200, but then you step back and realize that all you're doing is pointing and clicking with your mouse. Some people seem to find this game decent, but despite all the things this game did right, ugh, it ended up being a total snooze fest in my book. I'm glad I got it for free because I would not pay 50 cents for this one personally. Gore Guns and Cannoli! I realized I've been endlessly calling this game Gore Guns and Cannoli, which makes me wonder what it would be like if Medusa was a mob enforcer. You don't need cement shoes no more! You are the cement shoes, but I digress. This game's been covered before, and I liked it decently. The second iteration is much more action-packed, but if you're looking for a more methodical shooter that focuses on counting your bullets and reloading at smart points, then this game will probably please you. There are some points where you will be positively overwhelmed with enemies, 
but luckily it's possible to cheese your way through those moments. It does make me feel a little bit dirty, but the Mafia's never been known for fighting fair, right? The game is decent fun with one player, but things really get kicked up a notch if you pull in a player too. Overall, it's not a bad side-scroller, feels pretty tactical. I like it. For 50 cents, it gets a pass. Game number four, Learn Japanese to Survive Trilogy. Watashi wa no name daten does. Watashi wa video game ga suki desu. Honto ni? Hai! And that's about all I learned from four years living in Japan. So do I think these games will take my knowledge of Japanese even further? Perhaps so. And the learning process is cleverly disguised as an RPG. Start learning the basics with Hiragana Battle, build on that foundation with Katakana War, finally Kanji Combat will really put you through your paces. Hiragana and Katakana are easy enough, but Kanji, oof, really boggles the mind. Why do I need to know Moon Runes anyways? I mean, I do love Japanese video games, but they all get translated decently, right? Maybe it's for all of those animes that I'll never end up watching. The learning aspect is pretty legit, with quizzes to help you retain knowledge, but the RPG part feels pretty tacked on. The gameplay's passable and does make learning more fun than just sitting down with a stack of flashcards. Although I think the flashcards would be a more effective learning experience, and you can find RPGs that are way better done than this one. So it kinda goes right down the middle. If you're looking for an overall fun game, look elsewhere. But if you want to learn Japanese, uh, this could be a decent place to start, I suppose. For 50 cents, yeah, why not? <laughs> F1 2018. Ah, the last good F1 game before everything went to DLC hell in 2019. This is a hardcore racing sim that features stats that make me feel like I'm playing a racing RPG. That in itself is good enough to keep me hooked in pretty decently, but when you add a rival system on top of that, oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Why are there not rival systems in more games? Rivals are what pulled me straight to the end of Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor. The rival system in F1 2018 isn't as in-depth, but all you really need to do is point to a guy and go, That's your rival! And my testosterone starts flowing in anticipation of beating him into a pixelated pulp. I'd like to see a few more quirks added, but at this point in the F1 series, they'd probably make you shell out a few bucks just for that feature and call it DLC. Ugh. Again, for 50 cents, it ain't too bad. I've seen it bundled quite a few times before, so you very likely already have it. But I would definitely play this game over the 2019 iteration. Easy. Train Valley! What game is this? I lost track. Whatever. I've never been much of a train guy. I know some train guys, and I can appreciate their appreciation for the massive hunks of steel that carry entire industries on their back, but it's never really vibed with me in any significant way. I can still enjoy trains in my games, Rise of Industry has plenty of trains, and I'm sure most people know what a boner I have for that title. But a game centered solely on the trains? I just don't get it. Train Valley isn't train simulator levels of uninteresting, but it doesn't really grab me on a personal level. The game itself is decent, nice models, plenty of content, well-built difficulty curve. It feels like playing with the train set that I never had, but at the end of the day it's just a game about trains. If you like open-ended puzzles with a train aesthetic, then snag this one. But as a gamer that's never been particularly into trains or puzzles, I give this one a solid meh. I can see why some people like it. If you like it, hey, good for you. But it is not for me, personally. Cook Serve Delicious 2. A strange combination of being a fantastic entry point for the Cook Serve Delicious series, while also being objectively the worst entry in the Cook Serve Delicious trilogy. Now why is that? Well, the main reason for me is that this game features prep stations. This seems like a great idea, and of course is actually a thing if you're playing Cook Serve Delicious for your 9 to 5 job, but this is a video game, and it's the type of video game that I play when I want to keep my mind occupied for extended periods. Prep stations neuter the frantic energy that made me fall in love with this series. It's great for people who are just dipping their toes into this kind of title, but for veterans of the series and games similar to this, something will probably feel extremely off. 
and prep stations are most assuredly the main cause. But, you know, when prep stations are basically the only thing that I have to complain about, and when that complaining makes for quote-unquote the worst entry in a series, then you know they're still doing something right. I did buy Cook Serve Delicious 3 for full price, on release, such is my passion for this series. And if Cook Serve Delicious 4 pops up, you better believe I'll snatch that up just as quickly. It's a fantastic game that will keep your fingers and your brain busy, and swapping out food on the menu and building the best restaurant possible, it's, it's just really cool. And even better is that I don't have to worry about paying the bank back should my restaurant fail completely. Ah, <laughs> oh, video games. Our final game on this list is Meadow. Why is this game on my wish list? Some sort of mistake, some sort of misclick, I'm sure. This is a walking simulator slash exploration game that is basically just a thinly veiled attempt by Might and Delight to get you to purchase some of their previously released titles. I've always enjoyed the shelter games. Might and Delight makes some good stuff, but I truly cannot get behind Meadow. You collect these yellow crystals to unlock different animals to play as. You get like a goat and a frog and a rabbit. But hey, how come those players get to be birds or a lynx? Oh, well, the lynx players own Shelter 2, one of Might and Delight's previous game. The bird players own the entire Shelter catalog. What? It's DLC that basically requires purchasing a separate game? I cannot condone that. Doesn't really matter all that much because this game isn't really much of a game anyways. There's no objective aside from collecting some crystals. You basically hang out and emote towards other players in a chat room where none of the players can chat. Ugh. A decent idea, but the execution leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> Easy pass on this one. So what do I think of this bundle as a whole? Well, four bucks, I mean, that ain't too much. I'd say overall, it's pretty worth it. The only true duds in this bundle would be Let Them Come and Meadow. Train Valley, I can admit, is a pretty good game. However, I just don't get it. F1 2018 will probably pull a lot of people in. Learn Japanese to Survive Trilogy also has some merit. And then at the top of the pile, we've got Reventure, Gun Score and Cannoli, and Cook Serve Delicious 2. So, two mag games, two middling games, three top tier games. I'd say go for it. All things considered, it ain't too bad of a bundle. And th they're not lying, you know, it's the very positive bundle, and all these games are rated very positively on Steam. I also think that they cover, like, a pretty wide breadth. Oh, racing fans, we got something for you. Platformer fans, we got something for you. Super casuals, okay, I guess go play Meadow. <laughs> Really, I would suggest any of the Shelter games before playing Meadow, but, you know, you do you, bro. I can't live your life for you, that's all I'm saying. And then, of course, you've also got to take into account how many times these games have been bundled before. I've seen a lot of them floating around, basically. But if you don't have them, if you're kind of new to Steam and, and PC gaming, then it, it might be okay to pick it up. A lot of people will probably choose to pick this one up and already have at least one or two of the games contained within it. And if that's the case, then I'd appreciate you donating your extra keys to Dayton Does and his key hoard for the giveaways in the Dayton Does Discord. So yeah, overall, uh, not the greatest bundle that I've ever seen, but I mean, why not for four bucks? Eh, there's definitely been other bundles that blew my socks off way harder, but there's also been other bundles that, that make me want to puke a lot more. So <laughs> this, this one does fall basically right in the middle. It's the average, it's the average bundle that we've come to expect from Fanatical, and I'm definitely appreciative for it, so. Big shouts out to Fanaticals for uh, putting all these bundles together. Big shouts out to you for listening this far. I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the video. Also, check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, and Patreon. And I would also like to give a shout out to my wonderful, lovely patrons, Just Austin, Robert Waits, Dot Nathan, Crimson Albedo, Lady Nix, Radimus Cisco, Damon Darkstar, and Nico the Legend. We did have a couple people drop out from last month. I think that might be because I took a break for so long, or maybe they're just those people that like sign up for the Patreon just to uh, reap the rewards. So I'm gonna have to have a little change in procedure and be like, okay, after you make the first payment, then you get the rewards. So I don't want to be like a hard ass or anything, but I'd, I also don't want to be taken advantage of. So those are all the people that 
have made a payment and helped Dayton does to live the dream. So I do appreciate you guys so much. I hope you check out my other channel as well. Red X, we got some stuff going on over there. I'm going to record that video right after this one. We could get a double upload today. But, I mean, on two different channels. So is it technically a double upload? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I'm rambling way too hard. I'm super happy to be recording again. This is just like such a, a creative release. You know what I mean? And I appreciate you guys listening and giving me your thoughts. Even when I wasn't uploading, the Discord server is totally popping. There's people like letting me know what they want to see and what they think of these bundles. And that really helps me to, to gauge the reception and like, should I be shitting on this or not? Although sometimes I do go against the popular vote and I'm like, you guys like this? Well, that's too bad. <laughs> I kind of ended up hating it. But usually I fall in line. My my quote unquote gamer sensibilities are, are pretty good, I do think. But that's the interesting thing about gaming. Not everybody agrees. Everybody likes different genres. So let me know what you like, what you decide to do with this bundle. I am going to finally shut up and get out of here. <laughs> Thank you guys once again for listening. This has been Bundle Banter. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one. Keep yourself safe out there. And until then, friends, bye-bye.